With this, the days of Russia's aggression are about to come to an end. Elon Musk has recently disclosed a devastating fully autonomous suicide drone swarm system that can choose and strike targets, including humans, without the need for human interaction. With missiles, these swarms of AI-powered drones can traverse enormous distances. Curious to know about these in detail? Well, hang on tight with us. Hello and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In today's video, we are going to talk about the lethal autonomous weapon system as leaked by Elon Musk against Russia. The US Army has provided a detailed description of what it expects from a new family of air-launched multi-purpose unmanned aircraft, which will include scouts, electronic attackers, decoys, and even suicide drones, disclosed tech giant Elon Musk. They'll be able to interact semi-autonomously with other manned or unmanned planes and helicopters, and they could even be able to function together as a completely autonomous network swarm. These air launch effects will very definitely find their way onto various existing and future manned and unmanned vehicles, including the Army's MQ-1C Grey Eagle drones. On August 12, 2020, the Army's Combat Capabilities Development Command CCDC, issued a request for information for prospective drones and related technology that might be used to create various types of air launch effect ALE. Musk revealed that the contracting notice is primarily focused on prospective drones that fall into the large and small size categories, as well as systems that enable them to perform one or more of four functions, active and passive surveillance, decoys, and those capable of disrupting the enemy via non-kinetic strikes. There's also a mention of an ale lethal, a lingering munition kind, however, the paper doesn't specify what capabilities it needs. The contractual document states, as Musk mentioned, the future multi-domain operational environment will provide a highly deadly and complicated combination of traditional and non-traditional targets. Networked and mobile air defense systems with expanded ranges, as well as long and mid-range firing systems that impede freedom of movement, will be among the objectives. It goes on to say that a family of small and large unmanned air launch systems that operate as members of a team with other manned and unmanned platforms to detect, identify, locate, report, and deliver lethal and non-lethal effects against threats is needed as part of a larger ecosystem to defeat these threats. The Army currently states that the big AL category will comprise of drones weighing little more than 225 pounds and ideally no more than 175 pounds. They must be able to fly at least 70 knots with a combat range of up to 350 kilometers and a total flying time of 30 minutes, according to the service. The objective is to increase those performance criteria up to 650 kilometers and an hour of total flight time. Drones under 100 pounds and perhaps no more than 50 pounds in the end that can cruise to 30 knots over a distance of 100 kilometers and have a total flight duration of at least 30 minutes will fall into the tiny category. The goal for these smaller ales is a range of 150 kilometers and an hour of flying time. According to Elon Musk, a swarm of these air-launched drones may distract and confound opposing air defenses, disrupt communications lines, and generally disrupt an adversary's defensive posture while diverting their focus away from friendly troops. They'll probably be integrated with comparable networked assets being developed elsewhere in the U.S. military, at least to some extent. The decoy and disruption ales seem eerily similar in concept to the Navy's nebulous netted emulation of multi-element signature against integrated sensors or Nemesis program. Furthermore, while the Army has not yet decided which drones it will purchase to meet any of its AIL requirements, this request for information comes after tests in the last year or so involving the air launching of Area Small I's air launch tube integrated unmanned system 600, Altius 600 drones from the service's MQ-1C unmanned aircraft and UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. The Altius 600 is smaller than the Army says it needs, even for the smaller AL drone with a maximum total weight of fewer than 30 pounds, Musk stated, but it meets the general description of the type of device the Army wants. The Altius may be launched from a common launch tube, CLT, and carry payloads weighing 3 to 7 pounds, such as full motion video cameras, tiny signals intelligence systems, or even a kinetic warhead. In computer-generated commercials marketing the Invictus Armed Scout aircraft, Bell has employed drones that seem extremely similar to, if not identical to, the Altius 600. Under the Army's Future Attack Reconnaissance Aircraft FARA program, Invictus is now competing with Sikorsky's Raider X. FARA, which will replace the AH-64 Apache attack helicopter in the Armed Scout role, is part of the Future Vertical Lift FVL program which aims to build a family of new rotary wing aircraft to replace the service's existing helicopter fleets. The ALES will primarily serve as a storage facility for the final FARA design as well as the FLRAA, 
which is expected to replace at least a section of the service's Blackhawks. The Army is also interested in incorporating this new family of tiny drones onto the MQ-1C or other future unmanned designs, as evidenced by the Altius 600 testing and the image in the AL call for information. Of course, as the Army refines its criteria and receives feedback on what potential contractors believe is practical, it remains to be seen how the AL effort, as well as work on FARA, FLRAA, and other possible launch platforms will evolve. Next month, the service wants to host an industry day on AIL to facilitate exactly those types of dialogues according to the service. Nonetheless, with Elon Musk, the Army envisions a future in which its manned and unmanned aircraft fleets will be able to launch swarms of drones that will begin searching for enemy forces, disrupting their operations, providing targeting information for friendly units, and launching both kinetic and non-kinetic attacks. Last year, the Pentagon conducted a test of a loitering munition, often known as a suicide drone, that would arrive at hypersonic speeds over its specified target region. The idea has now been handed over to Elon Musk for further development. Additional facts concerning the Vintage Racer program, as well as other sophisticated weapon systems, have recently surfaced in an official photo of Secretary of the Army Ryan McCarthy addressing them. After discovering a photo of McCarthy at the Association of the United States Army's top annual conference and exposition in Washington, D.C. last year, Steve Trimble, Aviation Week's defense editor and a good friend of the war zone, first reported on the new facts regarding Vintage Racer. On the 14th of October 2019, the photo was shot. According to Pentagon budget papers, the initiative dates back to at least the 2017 fiscal year, with the Office of the Secretary of Defense getting $2.5 million in the 2017 fiscal year and another $1.2 million in the 2018 fiscal year for the project. The term hypersonic ingress refers to the vintage racer loitering munitions' ability to reach its target at hypersonic speeds, which are defined at speeds above Mach 5. It's unclear how the munition gets to the target location at these speeds, but based on the information now available, a ballistic missile appears to be the most likely option. Another possibility is, as per Musk, an air-breathing hypersonic cruise missile, but this appears unlikely given the enormous cost and complexity of such weapons, as well as their present level of development. The Office of the Secretary of Defense did not execute a comprehensive flight test of the entire system, or just the loitering munition component, according to Pentagon budget papers. Because of their sheer speed, as well as their typically flat atmospheric flight paths and great degrees of mobility, advanced maneuvering hypersonic weapons are highly survivable. This helps them to get past air defenses that are densely integrated. Because opponents have little time to move or otherwise seek cover, or even attempt to fire down an approaching weapon, which is a challenging proposition in general, they are perfect for timing sensitive attacks as well as hitting otherwise crucial targets in denied regions. Meanwhile, while ballistic missiles may still travel at hypersonic speeds and are tough to defend against, they are less survivable than their most sophisticated hypersonic counterparts in most instances. Another fascinating trend emerging with drone warfare, according to Musk, is the Libyan Second Civil War. In Libya, we're seeing drone versus drone proxy combat, he added. On the one hand, you have the GNA, which is backed by Turkey. Turkey has developed its drone program in response to the United States' unwillingness to give the technology. On the other hand, there's the Libyan National Army, which is backed by the Emirati Coalition. He also emphasized that a drone is a weapon system that contains a whole TV studio. It's more than simply a killing machine. Drone footage will be utilized to support a war narrative, as we saw with Azerbaijani Twitter during the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, he stated. I'd advise you to be wary of the drone's falsehoods. However, this is how the future of combat is beginning to look. So lethal autonomous drones are not only some fatal weapon, rather it's a revolutionary invention in the history of the war that can be used to surface the actual truth. And if you know, truth is always lethal. Okay folks, that's it for today's video. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way.